All right. Welcome, folks, to the podcast. In today's podcast, I'm joined with my friend Zaid Admani, who is a popular video creator on TikTok. So mostly we go over technology here and what we see for the future of technology and how he got started on TikTok. So enjoy the show. If you want to see any more of his videos, the link is in the show notes as well. And, you, and his handle on TikTok is Admani underscore explains. And he also has Instagram too. And I'll put both of those in the show notes. So enjoy the show. All right, and we are kicking off. I'm joined with Zaid Admani. How you doing, Zaid? Pretty good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, happy to have you on. Thank you so much for taking the time to join the podcast. Thank you for having me. So I came across you. I was on TikTok. I knew I follow Gary Vaynerchuk, and he was talking about TikTok for like two or three months. And I was like, I got to do it. I got to jump on here, see what it is. And I came across you just passively. I was just going through my feed and I loved your content. You were talking about uh, tech and like, it was like how Steve Jobs came to flourishing or stuff like that. So that's how I actually found you. So it was so cool. And yeah, I just reached out to you and you were kind enough to join. I, you know, that's this is so cool to hear because the reason I started making TikTok videos was because of Gary Gary V as well, dude. Um, <laughs> so that guy's got a lot of influence, obviously, on both of us. Yes, yeah, he's the man. <laughs> he really is. I mean, I, I think it was a. I think he. Was, I was listening to his podcast, and he was like, "Everyone should be making TikTok." You no, know, typical Gary V fashion, like everyone should be making TikTok videos. And I was like, "All right, Gary, I'll try it out." And then <laughs> boom, here here I am. That's crazy. Yeah. So I I really like. I went to the very first one and you started around, it was last year, like October and most yes. of them were sports oriented. So you seemed like you were a sports fan. Yes. Yeah. That's kind of how it's, so it's, that's how I started off, you know, cause you know, I'm a huge sports fan and I'm like, well, I was trying to incorporate some of the TikTok trends and I saw some people make sports TikTok content. So I was like, just trying to be inspired by them and made some, you know, try to copy some of them and try to, you know, put my own twist to it. And, and it was pretty good. It had some decent success. But um, and then I finally found my own flavor, which has really, really helped me take off. And the content's been been pretty successful uh, here recently. Yeah. And so the tech ones crack me up. And it's just <laughs> it's just because it's so it's so quick paced. And that's what I love about TikTok. And I was just it's so quick paced and you can kind of just edit and quickly get the conversation going. And it's just the funny interactions between like Apple and Microsoft. Like that's the one the very first one I came across was Apple dealing with Microsoft. And it, yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's. I, I think you're right. That's why I think I have enjoyed making TikToks um, more than any other pieces, you know, any other social media, just because of how quick you can do it. And you know, I can come up with an idea and then just record it within half an hour, and boom, post it, and then and then you know, see the reactions, which is so much easier than like even you know making a YouTube video where you have to like. You know, I think the production quality has to be a lot better on YouTube versus like a TikTok where my lighting is so poor and I'm like usually like, you know, kind of disheveled and um, but it works, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, one of my favorite things about TikTok is it's passive and it's all video. Like you can just it's so funny. I en I enjoy TikTok. It's far superior than like Instagram, I think. Yes, I, I agree. I've basically like TikTok has replaced my Instagram um, attention for sure. Like I rarely <laughs> go on Instagram now, except for, you know, maybe just catching up once a day before I was like an Instagram addict. I'm not going to lie. But but now it's I get everything I need on TikTok. Yeah, it's so funny, man. It's so comical. And like a lot of I was wondering what made you get, gravitate towards tech? Because I, I'm a huge fan of tech. I love hearing um, like how Elon starts or um, just the outlook of Steve Jobs or mm -hmm. Bill Gates? So what made you gravitate towards tech? Well, so I, it's, I think I would start off with like the very, very first viral um, video I had on TikTok was um, the story between how Facebook tried to buy Snapchat. And I always thought that was like a funny story. And I, I don't know, I wanted to put my own twist to it to see like, you know, talk about like how I think it went down. And um, when I saw that, and I'm a huge fan of tech as well, a huge, huge fan, read all the tech stuff, just just an absolute nerd. And so when I saw that take off, I was like, okay, well, there's there's a, people seem to like this. There's a, there's like a there's actually there there's an there's an audience for this. And I tried making some more of it, and it was just it continued to get bigger and bigger. And I bet you know I got more and more um, 
create messages, likes, views, and 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 then so that's kind of why I'm just kind of zoning in on it now, just because there's just there's a, there's an audience for it. People are interested in hearing how Steve Jobs started Apple and and how Microsoft you know helped save Apple, and so yeah, that's why I gravitated towards that. I was passionate about it. I was interested in it. I had a little bit of knowledge about it as well. And um, the best part is, I you know before making these TikToks, I would go back and research some of the details, and so. And that was like fun for me. It wasn't like homework. It was like, I want to know about this stuff. Right. And so it just made it easier for me to make the videos because I'm like, I would just spend, honestly, I would, my, my, I would try to spend like maybe in, you know, 15, 20 minutes researching, but I would just get so into it that like my research time would end up being like an hour and a half and I would have all these <laughs> notes and I would have to like filter out some of the stuff for my TikToks because like you only have a minute. Right. Right. Yeah. And so anybody who doesn't know what TikTok is, it's almost like it's just video Instagram and you can kind of, it's curated kind of like Twitter. Right, right, exactly. And that's actually probably a pretty good uh, way to describe it. It's like Instagram plus Twitter. Um, you can, you know, the, like the viral nature of it, like the Twitter has, you can, you have that on TikTok. But like the pictures and video is, well, mostly video for TikTok is what, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, honestly, it's a genius app if you think about it. And I'm Dude. surprised that someone like Instagram didn't try to do something like it before because it's just, um, it's, and it's so addicting, right? Because when you, you click the app and it's just, boom, you're on, you're on like a, 10, 15 second video and then you're just swiping and you look up and it's, you've been on it for 45 minutes and it feels like 10 minutes. Yes. Yeah. It captures your attention for sure. And there's, yep. so there's a really cool documentary um, inside Bill's brain and there's, um, it's reference to your video with Bill Gates and uh, uh, Steve Jobs, I believe. And so he was getting, he was getting, I think uh, by the government, he was like on trial mm -hmm. for the government. Yeah, he was uh, for antitrust. Basically, they were saying that Microsoft was a monopoly and the government um, wanted to break Microsoft up. And so Steve got or uh, uh, Bill Gates got worried about that. Yeah. And then so he bought shares. Yeah. So what he ended up doing was in order to make it seem like he wasn't trying to kill all his competition, um, he bought uh, he bought a stake in Apple um, because 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 Steve Jobs asked him to. So it was kind of like a deal. It was like a trade that he made. Like, hey, Steve, you buy you save Apple by investing your you know 150 million dollars, I believe it was, and then that way you can prove to the government that you're not trying to kill your competition. You're actually trying to you know even help some of them, and you know you want to form partnerships with them. It was a win win for both companies. Um, I don't think anyone ever saw Apple overtaking Microsoft, which they did from the release of the iPhone. But it's just an interesting flashpoint in history on on how just if Bill Gates didn't invest that money in Apple, Apple might be bankrupt and we might not have iPhones today, you know? Yeah, the world would be totally different. Exactly. Less pretentious, probably. <laughs> well, yeah, probably. Uh, another one, one of your TikToks blew my mind. It was uh, the AirPods. And if AirPods was its own separate company... It would be yeah. what was it? It was more. It would be more yeah. valuable than McDonald's. Yeah, and, and so and I've gotten some pushback on like how I determine the valuation, and, and that, that's fine. Uh, but essentially, yeah, I mean, AirPods—they're just selling so many of these AirPods that I mean, I, like Apple is a juggernaut, man. They're, I think their market cap recently was 1.4 trillion, which is—I mean, I don't think most of us cannot fathom what that means. No. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, the AirPods one. Uh, is it blew my mind when I first when I first saw it because I, I bought some AirPods Pros and I was like you know I wonder what's like the deal with AirPods how many AirPods does Apple sell and I started doing some research and there was a lot of articles just talking about AirPods as a business itself and then that's why I got um, uh, motivated and inspired to make the TikTok. That's crazy, man! It's cr it's really crazy to see how many they actually do sell too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it, but the thing is, like, it it, it just makes it. Do you have do you have AirPods? No, I use uh, Beats. I've got the wireless okay. Beats. Well, well, yeah. So Apple owns Beats as well, which might oh, be God. a good for TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah, I mean, it, it, just, it makes it so easy to pair with your phone and just having no cords. I mean, it's just a painless, painless way to listen to audio, which everyone likes to do now because of podcasts and, and music and stuff. And so, yeah, I mean, it's it's. I guess looking back on it, we shouldn't be so surprised on why AirPods have just taken off. Yeah. I was I was blown away at that one, man. That was insane. And uh, so, I you recently I didn't get to watch this one, the Elon Musk one, but I've been blown away at just the sheer. Uh, what was it? It's the second largest car manufacturer or valuation for a car manufacturer behind 
Volkswagen today or a couple days ago? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, you know, the Tesla, the Tesla story is so interesting. And I'm actually, I'm actually going to be putting out a TikTok a little bit later today about like the part three of the Tesla saga that I've been doing recently this week. And, and, and and yeah, I mean, I, I'm blown away by Tesla's valuation. I personally think that they're a little bit overvalued. Um, Sorry, Elon. But, uh, but, you know, it's a, it, it just it's it's crazy, but I can understand why people are so hyped about it because they're they literally are changing the way. I mean, they're changing the car industry by what they're what they're doing, and so I'm I'm happy for them and I'm really excited. But I personally wouldn't be investing right now just because I feel like it's just a super high valuation that I personally can't justify. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I saw it jumped. It jumped like seventy dollars per share overnight, and it's just like the skyrocket, weird parabolic thing. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and honestly, like most people can't explain it. The thing about Tesla is that there's a there's like a subsector, especially if you go on Twitter, like um, that, that are just all, they they're Tesla haters. They hate Tesla because they think it's completely overvalued, and, and they're shorting the stock, which means they're going to make money if the, if the stock goes down. And this has been a thing for probably two years now, and they're crying today. They're crying. They've been crying the last three months because the Tesla has just been on an absolute tear recently. Yeah, like I'm a ginormous fan of Elon too. Like I just, Absolutely. I think he's just, guy, he's, he's a madman. Seriously. Yeah. He's a madman. And like, you got to respect his hustle. You got to respect his, I mean, what he's done. And, uh, but I mean, I think, you know, one of the, the reasons I wanted to make the TikTok about it was like, most people don't realize that he wasn't the one who founded Tesla. It was these two, it was just these two random guys in Silicon Valley who did it. And he just liked what they were doing and ended up just taking it over. Um, which is, which is, I mean, I'm happy that he did. Cause I don't think Tesla would be where it is today without him. One hundred percent. And a lot of people <clears throat> I read. Th- so there's a book, The Platform Revolution, and he was talking about how uh, Elon started or he was a co co owner of PayPal. Yeah, he was part of uh, he did. I think he was one of the co-founders of PayPal. Yeah. And so I didn't know this and I don't know how far this goes. But so they used fa- not fake accounts, but bots basically on eBay and they preferred the customer to buy the item through PayPal. And then they bought and sold items on eBay through those bots, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then it grew in popularity through PayPal. Yeah, I've heard. I've, yeah, actually, there's a, a really good podcast out there. Um, by I forget, Reed Hoffman is one of the guys who, start, who founded PayPal. And he kind of talks about some of the sketchy things that they did yeah. when they started PayPal just to kind of get traction. But, I mean, he... He, I think he calls it blitz scaling. Again, it's sketchy, but it obviously worked right. for PayPal, and, and they made a, a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, that's one crazy thing. Yeah. It's just like there's gray. There's so much gray. <laughs> exactly. But, I mean, like I said, these – I mean, that's why Silicon Valley companies are starting to get in a little bit of trouble because of this grow-at-all mentality, grow-at-all-cost mentality, and – now uh, there's been obviously they they have they have the spotlight on them because they're doing some shady stuff and um, I'm pretty sure uh, people aren't happy with some of the things that, that they're doing with people's data. The government's starting to look into them. So I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm I'm still a huge fan. I love I love the technological disruption and I love like I mean you know the fact the reason I like tech is because every single day there's always some sort of innovation. Like the 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 speed of innovation is nuts and. To, to put it into perspective, like just 10 years ago, I think is when Uber started. I think they started in 2009. 10 years, right? Which is just not that long if you think about just in like, you know, just a lifetime. It's like 10 years is nothing, but it completely changed the way we move around cities, you know, changed the way we travel. And that's what I just really, really love about tech. And that's why there's so many stories to be told about it. And I'm just so happy that I have a platform like TikTok to share some of those stories and and, you know, trying to do it in a humorous way to where people can um, can kind of find it funny, but also learn something. Right. And dude, they are hilarious. So there's like <laughs> there was I can't remember if it was uh, who was it? I think it was Bill Gates stoned or Steve Jobs stoned. And it was just <laughs> yeah. like hilarious, dude. This guy's hilarious. So so you were talking about Uber and we were talking about Tesla. There are people that speculate that Uber is going to have to lease or have a fleet of Tesla's due to the automated automated driving. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's super, super interesting. I honestly think the future of mobility, and when I say future, I'm thinking maybe 30 years, 40 years, 
um, is going to be no one's going to own a car. Very few people are going to own a car. And like just like how we have a Netflix subscription, we're going to have a car service subscription to where there's just going to be self-driving cars everywhere. And it's going to be owned by either Uber or maybe like GM has their own you know, self-driving car subscription. And you just pay, I don't know, 5000 bucks a year and you can just call – you you can travel this many x miles a year and we never have to buy a car which would honestly i don't i don't really like driving that much so i would love that um and um if you just kind of think about it right like cars are idle i think the stat is like 95 or 96 percent of the time they're just sitting in a parking lot and not doing anything so if you can obviously figure out the difficult um problem of making them drive by themselves you can increase the utility of them so they're going to be moving around and they're not going to be sitting idle which means less cars on the road, which means less traffic, which means, I mean, there's just so many, so much benefits. You know, we don't have to build ginormous parking lots because we need people, we need to have parking space. Everyone can just self-drive their car up and boom, they can, you know, like go into a football game. You don't have to have 50,000 parking spaces, you know? Yeah. So um, I'm really excited to see where this goes. But I mean, the challenge of having a self-driving car, I know that Tesla has what they call autopilot, but it's really not that good and it's I, I i personally wouldn't trust it to drive it by itself like um you know maybe, maybe like some highway driving yes but besides that i probably wouldn't trust it um but there's, it's just such a difficult problem but i think they'll figure it out because there's just so much money at stake because whoever can figure out this problem is going to be the most valuable company in the world yes that's an, yeah that's one of the craziest things too because they they presume that it'll it'll work for semis as well right so then you get the massive di- distribution that's how I think it's going to start. I think yeah. it's already starting, right? Like, I mean, if you can figure out how to drive a semi truck by itself on the highway, which they probably, I think semis probably do like 90% of their driving on the highway anyways, if you can start with that, I mean, that would save so much money to, to for, for transportation costs and whatnot. And so you start there and then slowly, slowly you kind of figure out how to, how to make them drive in the city. But yeah, if you can figure out, I mean, if you, if you can figure out highway driving, I mean, that'll, that'll just be a huge, huge bump to just, that'll change the way we move around. Because, you know, if you imagine if you're trying to go from, you know, I, you know I, I'm in Houston, if I want to go to, to Austin, it's a two and a half hour drive, but two hours of that is on the highway. If I can have a car do it, that'd be awesome, man. I could just, you know, just chill and sit in my car and watch Netflix. Right. So yeah, media consumption would just skyrocket too with all exactly. this free time. Exactly. Maybe or even maybe even productivity. You know, I can imagine yeah. like you know you could do some work, you know, or, or whatever. But yeah, it frees up that time, which is a, which is huge. Yeah, yeah. You'd probably, I don't know if you'd measure it in GDP, but you'd measure it in productivity for sure. Yeah, there'd be a lot of just open time. A lot of people, exactly. I think. So they have like this thing called the U index, and it's like a happiness scale basically. So hour hours per day. Like, what are you doing that is actually fulfilling? And like, I guess a big soul sucker is just traffic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I had to sit in it every day too. And it is, it is horrible. But I mean, yeah, if you can figure out self-driving cars, that would be amazing. I'm, I'm looking forward to that day because uh, I hate driving. But I still think that some of these tech companies have definitely overpromised. Um, cause I remember hearing about it five years ago. They're like, Oh yeah, by 2020, we're going to have self-driving cars. And I was, I was fully bought and I was like, hell yeah, I, mean, I can't wait. <laughs> but, um, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. I think it's probably going to be closer to 2030, maybe even 2035. You know, it's, it's just a difficult problem. Mm-hmm. Do you follow SpaceX at all? I, I mean, I do. I think they have a, they have some, uh, an office here in Texas. Um, and, I mean, I follow them. I'm not going to lie. Like space tech, I'm just not as familiar with it because it's just it's just so far out it's just like yeah. almost fantasy to me right i mean it's really cool what elon musk is saying about you know making a colony on mars and stuff but i mean that's that's almost like fantasy to me it's like all right man like I, it's just not as I, I like more tech that's at home you know that we can actually tangibly affect our lives on a day-to-day basis i think i feel like space stuff is um i'm just not as excited about it right it seems like yeah when elon talks about you know, multi-planetary species, it almost just comes off manic. He's like, I want something, <laughs> I, I want something to look forward to and not be sad about for the future. And I'm like, dude, you got some, what's going on? Oh man, I wonder like, I want to know what his calendar looks like. Cause I mean, this guy, obviously he's doing Tesla. He has SpaceX, which are two very successful companies, I would say. Um, and, and he's just always, he says he has time to tweet I mean, I'm like, how, what is, how is he so, how is he not tired all the time? You know, dude. Yeah. My God. He talks about putting in just hours and hours and hours. So there's like an interview of him. He's like, if you just do the work for 80 hours every week, 
for a year, no one will catch you. And it's just like, <laughs> I mean, oh my God, dude. Like, just that's insane. But I guess that's how you get space shuttles that land simultaneously. That's right. I'm happy he's doing it, man. I'm happy that someone's out there that can that can pull that off. But, but yeah, I, I, I'm very impressed by that, by Elon Musk. Are there any other trends that you see going on right now that not a lot of people are like paying attention to or something that you believe is going on in tech that not a lot of people actually believe are going on or would find it hard to believe? Oh, man. I mean, I think it, I'm trying to think, um, you know, I mean, obviously, everyone's talking about artificial intelligence and the impact it's going to have on people's jobs and stuff. I really think that that's that's a real thing. And I, I you know, I don't think that people realize like once artificial intelligence gets good enough, it, it could it could replace white collar work. Right? We always think about, you know, blue collar work being replaced. But, you know, if, if you have a an A.I. that can like design a design a bridge i mean think about that like you're you're putting some structural engineers out of business now maybe you know maybe i'm completely off base and i'm not as well read into this as, as, as i would like to be but but yeah i really think that artificial intelligence and i know a lot of people talk about it and i'm not trying to sound the sound the doomsday alarm i really don't think it's as doomsday as some people are making out to be but i really think that it's going to be a it's going to have a pretty big impact on i mean you kind of you know like even thinking about like when you go to a fast food place now they have these kiosks at least where i live they have kiosks now and so if you could just i mean put more of that in there and just the impact that's going to have on society i think we're going to continue to see this decade and it might not be all good right yeah so you'd you have 30 employees and with those kiosks you have four now for troubleshooting right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But I mean, I think with everything, um, the more I read into them with everything, societies adjust, right? Every, everyone adjusts. People will learn new skill sets. Um, you know, if you have robots everywhere, you're going to need to have technicians that can that can um, fix those robots. Uh, I, I think society will adjust. But I think there might be like a pain period of maybe five to 10 years where we're kind of going through this transition. Um, and, and, and it could be painful. But I really think ultimately long, long term, I think it's a benefit. Yeah. So even um, white collar work, there's this book, Andrew Yang has a book and it's the war on normal people and it's about AI and um, displacement of jobs. And he talks about oncology and how those computers are able to spot uh, cancer cells way better or the potential is there. Yeah, and that's that's a that's a great example of how like a robot or or an, art, or, or an algorithm can spot can spot cancer cells better than a human can. Um, I think and I think one of the other interesting things is um, you also have to think about um, with anything legal related. How do you assign blame, right? So, you know, uh, one of the things that I think about. I'm, I'm an engineer myself, and one of the things that I you know I think about is like okay if you know, let's just say there's a robot or an algorithm that builds a building, right? They design the building. Um, and then let's just say that there's an accident and the building falls down because it wasn't designed properly. Who is responsible for taking, who's, who's gonna take responsibility for that disaster? Um, you know, right now, everything that is constructed has to be signed and sealed by an engineer. And that is engineers is ultimately taking responsibility for the construction of a structure, a building, whatever it may be. But if you have algorithms designing it, who takes responsibility? Is it the responsibility of the company who manufactured or developed that algorithm? I, mean, I don't know. There's so many questions out there that, um, that, that are, I don't think we have answers to right now. Right. That reminds me, yeah, that's so tough. It's gotta be, I don't know. It's intellectual property. You know, I, so it's got to be them, the owners of the company, I guess. I, I'm with you. I, I honestly don't know. But uh, oh. those are some, again, some challenges that we're going to, I mean, we're, there's going to have to be new, new laws put into place to address some of the stuff because it is, uh, it's pretty scary stuff if you think about like, you know, I mean, because it, it always comes down to, I mean, when it comes to like anything like this, it always comes down to like, who do you assign blame to if something goes wrong? And that might be interesting. I mean, even when it comes to self-driving cars, right? Like I think I saw an interesting article, someone talking about, okay, if, an, if a self-driving car gets into an accident um, and, and, and hurts a passenger or hurts a passenger or hurts a pedestrian, who is responsible? Is it the responsibility of the manufacturer of that self-driving car? Is it the responsibility of the, of the company who um, put in the self-driving algorithm is the responsibility of the driver who should have been paying attention. I mean, how how does insurance get involved? Which, I mean, if there's so many interesting questions here that we personally we don't have answers to right now. Right. Yeah, that's terrifying, and it, <laughs> that is terrifying. And 
if it's a if it's a lose lose and it's it's just one life versus another life, driver or mm-hmm. pedestrian, what does the car choose? I yeah. would like my I don't know what my car what I even would want my car to choose. It's, it's, I think this is like kind of showed in. I, I, have you seen iRobot? Yes. One of the, one of the, I think there was a situation like that where like he could have saved an older woman or, or killed him, the driver, Will Smith, or he could have saved like the the child, and he picked the most optimal solution, which was uh, saving Will Smith because he had the higher chance of survival. And that's why Will Smith hated robots. And I was like, oh, well, we're going to be dealing with that situation in real life soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I do. I totally remember that. And it came to my head, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to throw it out in case you hadn't seen it. And it's oh, just man. like, that Any was a good mo- one. Oh, man. I'm, I mean, like I said, when it comes to like sci-fi movies, especially like, I mean, between 2000 and 2000, you know, and then 2019, it was like, I mean, I was, I'm a huge movie buffer. I was at one point. Uh, and, and so, yeah, no, I mean, I've seen, I, I robot is one of those ones that like, if it's ever on TV and I'm flipping through the channels, um, cause I still have cable cause I'm one of the weird people that still has cable. But, uh, if I've, if it's ever on TV, like I'll, I'll have to stop and watch at least 30 minutes of it. Right. He's got those converses. Yes, yes, Dude. yes. Oh man. That's a great movie. That's it actually is. an underrated movie. It is. It's, um, what else is another? So I really like Ex Mahina. That's artificial intelligence, too. That was a good one. Man, I saw that recently, and I, I so everyone was raving about it, right? Everyone was like, "You got to watch Ex Machina. You got to watch that movie." And I'm like, "Okay, cool. I'll check it out." I'm not gonna lie, man. I was I didn't like it as much. I was what? I mean, the, the 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 themes are great. The themes are cool, like the artificial intelligence and like taking you hostage. But I was like, I, I don't know. I think the pacing was a little bit slow for me. I'm I'm more of like. I want like the action. Like I want to see the action. I want to see the nonstop, just adrenaline ride kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, it's good. It is slow. It's got slow pacing. Uh, but yeah, it was just, it's got Oscar Isaac. I don't know if you know that guy. He's like one of my favorite actors right now. Oscar Isaac. He's the bald, I don't know he's that the guy. bald guy. Uh, he's pretty much, he created the, the robot. Oh, okay. That guy. Okay, cool. Gotcha. 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 I'm, I'm kind of trying to remember what, who, who that is. Cause I, I haven't seen X Machina in a while, but I'm actually Googling it mm-hmm. as you speak. I'm sure if I see his name, if I see his picture, I'll know who he is. What else has he been in? He's in the new Star Wars. Oscar Isaac. Oh, oh yeah. This is the, um, is he, uh, oh yeah, yeah. I know this guy is. Yeah. I've seen him. Yeah. He was in Ex Machina, uh, Star Wars. Man, I, I, so Frontier. speaking of Star Wars, I mean, I haven't even seen the new Star Wars yet, which is like surprising for me because I was like Star Wars day one, but the new one hadn't gotten very many good reviews. So I was like, well, I don't know. Maybe I'll wait till, you know, I can get it on demand. Yeah, they're haters, man. I It was fun. It was fun to it was watch. Fun. Yeah, it was enjoyable. That's, that's what I think, too. Like, I mean, if you're going to go in there hoping to see like, you know, an Oscar worthy thing, I'm like, don't don't go to a movie for that. Just go in there like. Just kind of shut your brain off and just enjoy the action. Enjoy like the lightsabers, man. Just have, have you know, that, that's how I typically watch movies. It was hilarious. The time I went and saw it, it was probably a week or two, probably two or three weeks later, actually. It was later in, in like its opening date. And a guy sat down and I was with a girl and I was like, hey, this guy's so late. But he happened to have like a dress shirt that was R2-D2. And I was like, damn, nice. he's such a big fan and he's seeing it so late. And she's like... This is not his first time seeing this. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's such a good point. He's probably seen yeah. this like nine times. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, there's some movies that are worth worth the rewatch. I think the only movie that I ever rewatched, I think, was uh, The Dark Knight when it first came out. Like, you know, it was 10 years ago or so. And I was like, this is amazing. I have to go watch it again. Like, because I, I think I saw it before when it first came out, like on a regular theater. And then uh, a bunch of my friends wanted to go watch it in IMAX. And I was like, all right, I'm in. I got to watch it in IMAX. Because it was like that special of a movie. Yeah, the creator of that one, I love Dark Knight too. Um, I'm going to, I got a poster for Christmas. I haven't put it up, but it's straight up Dark Knight. And it's just the Joker on there. But uh, nice. I'm a big fan of Christopher Nolan. He has Interstellar. It's a space movie. So I don't know if you've seen that one. Oh, man, I've seen it. And I am the biggest Interstellar hater there is. Oh, you didn't I've, like it. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> I, I'm the biggest Interstellar hater. Oh, I, I, I'm a big Christopher Nolan fan. You know, like all his other stuff, Memento, obviously, and, and and there's some other good ones. But I just didn't get it, man. I was, I mean, I, or I got it, but I was just like, I just didn't feel good after getting up and leaving the theater. I was, I, I just, you know, but I know that I'm in the minority because there's some people that love that movie. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry to say I'm a hater. Oh man, it's. 
it's crazy. There's been memes resurfacing. It's it's been out for like <laughs> five, ten years, but there's memes right. re- resurfacing about like I don't know. He's in the cockpit and he's like, we just lost thirty years and all kinds of shit. So it's just <laughs> it's just interesting to see that like this movie's so old, but I just don't get it. I just don't get it. But he's yeah. got a new one coming out called Tenant. And yes, that's got I've seen the trailer. I'm I'm excited. That one has to do with time. So that one looks cool. That one does. I mean, yeah, anything that can kind of get kind of tap that inception kind of thing, you know, like inception, I was a huge fan of. If something can kind of tap into that energy, I'm in. I'm I'm in day one. Yeah, it's got Robert Pattinson, who's Batman now, and then um Denzel's Robert Pattinson is Batman? Yeah. You didn't hear that? I didn't know that. It's wow. all over the Twitter sphere. Is that gonna work? I don't know. I don't know. A lot of people are up in arms with that one too, but he's yeah. like, uh, I'm just going to be Batman. It's fine. I, I mean, all right. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, he, you know, uh, I actually don't know anything that he's done besides Twilight. And then he was in Harry Potter for like a hot minute, but that was about it. Yeah. He was Diggory. I think. Yes, that's right. He was Cedric Diggory. Of course. I mean, I'm a Harry Potter nerd here big time. So I, you know, uh, that that's really kind of what I know him for. Yeah. And yeah, I don't, I couldn't tell you he was in. He's in a new movie, The Lighthouse, which I haven't seen, but that's all I know. Twilight's like the first one that comes to mind for him. Right, right. Well, I, 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 I mean, it's if it's if it's a Batman movie, I'll I'll probably end up watching it. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Batman. But yeah, so um, I uh, that's I gotta go. But hey, man, I, so thank you so much, Zaid, and I appreciate you coming on and everything. And uh, so your twic or your TikTok handle is one more is th- at at Admani underscore explains at money underscore explains and i'll put it in the show notes and everything link out too so but uh thank you so much brother i really appreciate it happy to have you on and you're always welcome back to talk tech because that was that was awesome yeah i know i appreciate that I'm, I'm 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 happy to be on and I hopefully let's do this again sometime soon yep always welcome thank you so much man all right man take it easy all right bye 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 everybody Thank you.